that's a short course truck and it's really cool. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Ryan and in this video today, we are gonna be going over this TLR SCT 3.0 slash 5.0. We've done some stuff to it to update it. I'm gonna go over all that stuff in a second, but I just really wanna know what you guys think. I think it's really cool. This is a body that I painted myself. I really love the Ken Block uh, Ford Cosworth that he's been running lately, and it has this paint scheme on it here. It was a lot harder than it looked. <laughs> there isn't any crazy fades or anything like that. It's all solid colors, but because the entire body is covered in this checkered pattern, it took forever. <laughs> black with a slightly lighter shade of black gray and then in the front it's white with a slightly off white shade kind of grayish white and then just these fluorescent colors in the middle and then of course the monster energy sticker had to do that so that we know exactly what this paint scheme is and then these are all my actual sponsors which i thought was kind of fun it's been a while since i've used just the factory default sticker for something and i thought that they looked pretty cool so let me know what you guys think about the paint job down below oh real quick before we jump into the rest of the video it'd be really cool if you guys came to the masters of dirt at beach rc this october uh, it's October 22nd, 23rd, 24th, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and link down below the RC sign up so that if you are thinking about attending that event, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is so much fun. Brent does a phenomenal job. You guys have seen the edits that I've done from that event in the past. I really hope that everyone could go. It's a really awesome event. So check it out. Now, let's jump into the rest of this truck, shall we? Now, as far as what we use to complete this kit, we have a lot of the usual stuff if you're subscribers of the channel. Diving into the electronics at the heart and soul of this machine, we have our Hobbywing XR10 G2. This is a higher end, one tenth scale racing ESC that I use in all of my other vehicles. So the theme that we're using for this truck is its first primary purpose is we're gonna race it. So I've built it as similar to my two wheel drive buggy as possible. It's going to be receiving all of its voltage juiciness from a Trinity white carbon 4,000 milliamp 2S battery. Getting the horsepower to our drivetrain is going to be a Trinity X-Factor 13.5. This motor may change depending on the application that we're gonna be using, but for now, that's what we're gonna start with. Taking our truck from left to right and back to center is going to be a BK Shorty Servo. And then of course we have this powered up and controlled by our Sanwa M17. So of course we have our Sanwa receiver in there as well. Now, as many of you know, this truck is a little bit older. The TLR has not updated this to a 4.0 or a 5.0 yet, but have no fear. A lot of the 5.0 parts can either be a direct drop-in or I want to say this carefully you can manipulate some of the 5.0 parts in there technically some of the parts I'm going to show you do not fit unless you get creative do some dremeling and then some of the things can fit as well let's go ahead and jump into some of the 5.0 goodies that I have in the truck we'll start with the easy stuff which is going to be the rear end the adjustable pill system that we have in our current TLR 22 uh, buggy and 22X platforms, those you can drop right in, they fit just like the, the ones that come in the kit, no issues there whatsoever. The adjustable bulkhead system, you can go ahead and drop in that black and silver finished Elite option bulkhead, fits right onto this transmission case and it's going to fit just the same and you get additional holes with this one compared to the one that comes with the kit. So upgrading the adjustability and it just fits no problems there. Now this is where we get into the first realm of things that technically fit, but I have to say that they don't completely fit perfectly. So some of you may not like this upgrade, but I was willing to do it if all of the mounting positions were the same and I gained adjustability. On the newer vehicles, we have what's called the adjustable height rear hubs, the VHA system, I believe, variable height adjustment. What it is, is there's a little insert that you can put into the hub itself and it will either raise the axle position up or down in relation to the arm. 
This is something that I play with from time to time when I'm looking to manipulate the way that the car feels as far as grip levels. If I'm on a really, really high bite track, you want this hub position to be typically all the way up. It keeps the car a little bit flatter. It doesn't roll as much so that you're not traction rolling. The grip levels are very low. You're gonna take that insert and you're gonna to wanna to drop that axle all the way down. Now, I lined it all up and this hub with the hex on is in the same position as far as width, the track width is the same as the stock hub and stock hex. The problem that you run into when you run this axle is it's designed for a wheel that has a lot of gap in the middle and this wheel doesn't have that. So you end up having to put this little spacer on there so that everything can tighten down and work properly. So it may look kind of silly and it's not a direct drop in, but I do gain some adjustability and a little bit of durability with these aluminum adjustable height hubs. Is that upgrade an absolute must? Not really. If you're looking for some more adjustments that you can make in your rear end and play around with setup, then go ahead and give it a try. I went ahead and linked down below all the parts that you would need to try it, but again, it is not a direct drop-in fitment. It is custom and technically it doesn't fit, just to be clear. Going up to the front end of the truck, you can look closely at the steering rack system that I have in there. Again, this is something that I have to start with saying, if you just buy the parts and you try to drop it in here, it does not fit. This requires a little bit more custom fabrication to get it to fit, but I just wanted to have all the same geometry in this vehicle as my other vehicles, like as much as possible. So that way setup changes are going to hopefully be pretty similar between all the vehicles and I'm not working with different systems. That's the overarching theory here. Going into this, we have the bell cranks and the steering rack are gonna be what you see in the TLR 22 5.0 Elite Kit. So super durable, all the aluminum stuff, super lightweight, and it's all the updated geometry that we currently have for the 22 platform. This one, however, when you go to put it in there, the clearance that the front bulkhead gives you is not enough. What I ended up having to do is dremel out a lot of the areas where the steering link is going to rub and not have enough clearance. Also on the front end of it where the bell cranks are turning, the bulkhead, it kind of comes down a little bit too early and it makes contact with the bell cranks and makes everything tight. So you have to carefully grind away at that material. And then I actually ended up spacing the bulkhead by half a millimeter to get it up off of those bell cranks so that I do have clearance and those can move freely. The downside here is that the amount of material that I took out of that front bulkhead some could argue that I may have compromised the rigidity of it. So if you're out there bashing around and you tend to break those front bulkheads, what I did definitely didn't help at all. So is it a necessary upgrade? Not at all. Did I do it just because I was trying to see how many of the 5.0 parts I could put in this truck and make it a SCT 5.0? Yes. <laughs> as far as the shocks that came with the truck, I am currently running it as it would come right out of the box. Standard length bodies, shafts, caps, all of that stuff is how it comes out of the kit because I just wanted to build it, at least run it a few times how it is like this before I change anything. What I will be changing is I am going to be installing the RC Life uh, Lowrider kit. It basically allows me to run the entire 5.0 rear end as far as transmission case, and all of that stuff so that we can run it with a little bit more aggressive uh, lay down geometry. So if I find myself at a higher bike indoor track, that's probably going to be very advantageous versus running the stand up three gear that this comes with out of the box. For all of your outdoor dirt tracks or anything with like medium bike conditions, this stand up configuration is probably way better than a lay down configuration. Laydowns are going to generate a little bit more corner speed while sacrificing a potential amount of mechanical grip in outdoor situations. So 
Something I'm gonna play with in the future, I may eat my own words and find out that I like the lowrider kit everywhere, but we don't know yet. It's gonna be coming to me soon, and I will be doing another video with this showing that system in there. When I go to put that system in, I am going to be doing things like putting in a titanium screw kit, and then I am going to be changing some of the shocks to incorporate that lowrider system. The rear shocks are gonna be a little bit just too tall, and that lowrider system drops this rear tower position down a little bit, I think. And then we do run a smaller body, which I already have, and we'll get into those details when, when the time comes. So other than that, I know that there's a few other just little hop-up goodies that I have planned in the future. And of course, I'll include those in the future videos in our short course truck adventure. If you guys have any questions about the truck, things that I didn't go over, things that you're curious about, please drop those questions down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I know this truck is a little bit dated and I don't think the TLR has any intentions of upgrading this at the current point in time in case any of you are curious. This is just my own personal little journey having fun with some RC projects and just seeing where they take me. So we don't know what the future holds. I know that one thing that may happen in the future is this may venture into the realms of perhaps some drag racing or some oval racing, because I know that the two wheel drive short course truck platform is pretty popular for those. So if you guys would like to see those or pick between the two, let me know in a comment down below. And I'd really like to know what you have to say and what you would like to see with the future of this truck. I'm gonna be racing this at Masters of Dirt. So if you guys are planning on going to Masters of Dirt at Beach RC, October 22nd, 23rd, 24th, I believe for the dates, um, you guys can go check that out on RC Sign Up. I'll go ahead and link that down below. That is the one race every year that I just absolutely love looking forward to. Brent Densford, he does a phenomenal job putting that event on. So I'm really looking forward to running this truck there uh, for that event. I think it'd be really cool if some of you guys out there wanted to run in the short course truck class with me and do something similar with a paint scheme that looked like a professional race car driver that is just, you know, scaled down version of it like mine here. So that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, you know, all the usual stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.